Hey folks, I got a 3D printer. So one thing you may have noticed on the channel that's sort of lacking is 3D printing. We've got a CNC machine, we've got all the other tools, but we haven't got a 3D printer. So why was that? Well, it's largely because I was just waiting for the tech to continue evolving until I needed to actually use it. Now I've done some 3D printed rigs in the past, but because they've always been small ITX type ones, I've generally just outsourced the work to an SLS printer uh, based in London. Now the issue is there, they're really, really expensive. The prints are fantastic quality and nylon SLS is ridiculously strong. So you don't have to worry about it ever breaking or you know, difficult shapes and you can get incredible resolution. But being so expensive, it is completely prohibitive. So you can't really use it for any prototyping needs. It's great if you need a finished item, but that's about it. And then you need to be able to finance it. Uh, it just becomes rather difficult. So I figured since the 3D printing world is moving so fast, it just makes sense just to hold back a little bit because at any point when I need something new, there'll be a new model that comes out and I can jump on that. And that's what I've done here with the Prusa Research i3 MK3S. So what I've got here is the kit version and we're going to be assembling that today. Now, word of warning, I've not really done any research on how to assemble this one yet uh, because I thought it'd be quite fun to try and do that for the video itself and see how difficult is it to assemble. Now, Lots and lots of people have bought these kits. They're incredibly popular. So it seemed like quite a safe choice because I know it's going to be a quality printer if I get the settings right, but there's also going to be a lot of support on how to get the settings right. Now there's a very good chance that I want to get a larger volume or bed printer later down the line. So I figured since it's likely going to be a filament printer anyway, it makes sense to learn on something like this where there's so much support and it's a little bit easier to work in then jump straight in the deep end and be thinking, oh my God, how am I going to be doing this? I've got two independent heads, they don't line up, all that rubbish. I'd rather just learn something else and simple that I know is going to work if I get it right. So with that out of the way, let's unbox this thing and see what it comes with. peanuts here. Oh, that's a big bag. Oh, that's nice. UK plug. Delta penis you, eh? That's a very good sign. Fantastic OEM. Oh yeah. So we've got all the individual boxes now out of the big box and I'm very impressed so far because this looks like it's going to keep things really clear and hopefully easy to navigate because that is a big manual. Like that that's, looks like there's going to be a lot of instructions there. They look nice and clear but it'll be good to see if it's easy to navigate and find all the necessary parts. Uh, one thing that did catch my eye is the power supply here and that's made by Delta, which is a fantastic science because obviously they do a lot of uh, the very high-end server type power supplies. So that should be nice and reliable and I'm very glad to see such a good OEM on the, on the front there. Also, it comes with uh, one batch of um, filament uh, with the printer itself and I added an, uh, an extra one just to be able to do a little bit more practice uh, and just make sure I've got some time uh, to whack out some practice models, basically, and learn how to use the printer. Ooh, stickers! So according to the instructions, we need some needle nose pliers, a screwdriver, we've got a whole set here, and six Allen keys, hopefully all of these ones. Step two, all the, how many steps actually are there? Step 30, okay. Well, there was a lot of wiring to do in there as well. Classic. So the numbers in the header tell you which chapter you'll need that bag or box. All the boxes and bags are labelled. So I guess we've now got to get all the boxes and bags out of the remaining boxes. So let's do that. Okay, so these are the fasteners and all of that. Oh. Well, it did actually come with everything. Well, I've got the tools already, but it does actually come with a nice kit so that you can get it going straight out of the box. I like that. Ah, so all these printed parts 
are marked with their version numbers as well. Because one of the cool things about this printer is that um, they always release the upgrades and various sort of changes for each version. So you can either download or purchase the, uh, the parts for the next one and upgrade your existing machine to the newer, newer model, essentially. So having all of the version numbers and things built into the 3D printed parts themselves is quite good because it allows you to keep track of exactly which versions you've got and where they are. Fantastic. Okay. Oh no, it is a step here. Unfortunately, eat the gummy bears as instructed. Disobedience will not be tolerated. I guess we're just going to have to eat them, folks. Oh, that's nice. They also list the recommended torque if you're using a torque wrench. That's quite good. This assuming. There we go.
Well, would you look at that? It's all assembled and fully functional. So I've had a chance to print out a few different items. So I've tried obviously the Benchy here. And the very first item that I tried was of course the Prusa logo, which comes preloaded on the machine. And also had a go at one of these tree frogs. So the interesting thing is that these were printed out at 0.15 millimeter height. And this one's 0.05. Now that's maybe a little bit stringy. So I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to try experimenting with some other settings like retraction and uh, other kind of Z hop stuff like that. But it's really interesting how well the back I think came out because it's incredibly smooth, especially for a kit that we've only just assembled and I've not done any of the proper sort of optimization work and other settings that can really bring the best out of your printer. So it's really exciting. There looks to be a few changes that I'd like to make. So I'm not a huge fan of this holder for the filament because I feel like that puts a lot of weight at the top of the machine, which could maybe make it less stable when it's moving around quickly. So it's probably not a bad idea to make a stand which maybe puts the filament off to the side or behind the machine or something similar to that. And then other upgrades might include some handles or more stability. We'll have to see how it goes. I've also got some ABS filament here, which I'm going to be giving a go later on on some tougher objects, because obviously PLA is not really any good if you're doing high temperature stuff, or we need anything with a bit more durability because it's quite fragile in comparison. So it's a little bit more brittle. So it's not very good for things which might be, maybe need to snap into place or that sort of thing. But for now, this will keep me quite happy learning and I'm sure I'll be able to get some really good results out of it later on. In terms of how difficult it was to build, I say it was actually pretty simple. Um, it's not really any different to building a PC in, in many ways. A lot of the components sort of share similar roots and actually the electronics is very simple. They've made sure you don't need to do any soldering or any crimping. So it just sort of does come together quite quickly. And whilst it took me a little bit longer because I had to film the whole process, uh, I could easily see you doing one of these in, in a day or an afternoon or something and having a good bit of fun with it. Also, the calibration was very simple. So following the full instructions, it was fully calibrated straight off the bat. Just had to press the automatic calibration settings and it sort of just went through. I followed the video online on the Prusa's website and yeah, it was very, very simple. So I'm incredibly pleased with this particular purchase and uh, I would definitely recommend one. In terms of some of the future content that I'd like to get out of this thing, well, we've got some really exciting stuff coming along the way involving cases that might be a little bit different to the norm, which I'm hoping to be able to get into with this thing. Maybe I'll need an even bigger printer for those though, so this will be perfect for learning on. But before then, we've also got some little things I'm going to be printing around the workshop. I need to make sure that I've got some upgrades here and there to make the filming a little bit more easy. And I'm hoping to be able to share those with you in the future and maybe make some of the files downloadable as well so you can print them out yourselves. Now, of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe because we've got tons of really cool content, including 3D printing, CNC machining, modding, hardware reviews, all on the way, and you don't want to miss any of it. Of course, you can also find us over on builds.gg, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll catch you next time, folks.